Welcome. In today's short lecture, we will briefly discuss some important points from chapter 1 in our textbook. Obviously, our textbook have uh, 10 principles of finance listed in the first chapter, and we will go over 5 of those which we consider as very important. Well, the first principle that I consider very important is to acknowledge the importance of cash flows. Um, cash flows are not the same as accounting profits. In fact, a company can generate accounting profits but not have enough cash. And in some other occasions, you might have, you might generate cash flows. However, your accounting um, reports will show no profit at all. And in fact, cash flows and not profits drive the value of a business and ultimately at the end of the day that's what matters for shareholders in that respect we must determine the incremental or marginal cash flows when making financial decisions incremental cash flow is the difference between the projected cash flows if the project is selected versus what they will be if the project is not selected so that difference should give us the benchmark uh, should give us uh, the tools to to assess a project the second principle is to recognize that money has a time value the best way to consider that the typical example is that one dollar received today is worth more than a dollar received in the future so let me draw a timeline and consider this line being the timeline t and consider this as today now versus a year from today one year from today so why would one dollar received today be worth more than a dollar received in the future and the logic is pretty simple once you receive a dollar today you would simply deposit that dollar into a bank account that can earn interest along the way our money will grow into the original principal plus the interest that would show that the one dollar in the future is worth less than a dollar today which is when converted into future dollars will be worth one dollar plus the interest rate that it earns so this is a very very important principle in finance in fact throughout finance we create um, these uh, formulas to translate monetary amounts from the past into the future and sometimes from future in, into into the present okay um so that would be kind of a brief explanation about time value of money at least a first reason a second reason is that we need to acknowledge the opportunity cost and in that case the opportunity cost of funds of money um, opportunity cost is an economic term and it basically represents the cost of making a choice in terms of next best alternative that must be foregone uh, an example would be that by lending money to your friend at 0% interest there's an opportunity cost of 1% that could potentially be earned by depositing the money in a savings account in a bank so considering that you would hesitate to lend the money to your friend because um, the alternative is the foregone 1% interest that you could have been earning should should you have deposited your money into a bank account a third principle also very crucial is that risk requires a reward so any additional risk taken by an investor should be compensated with additional reward or and in that case we would just call it a, a return investors expect to be compensated for delaying consumption and taking on risk so therefore investors expect a return when they deposit their savings in a bank and they expect to earn a relatively high rate of return on stocks compared to a bank savings account because um, a bank savings account is under federal uh, deposit insurance guarantee whereas investing in stock markets um, your returns uh, 
can increase or decrease and as a result has a higher risk um, and as such the investor should be compensated for that additional risk taken when invested in in the stock market and that can be represented through this uh, upward sloping line on a risk return plane um, so the horizontal axis represents the risk taken and the vertical axis the expected returns as one can see even when we have zero percent risk there must be an expected return for delaying consumption and that explains here the y-intercept and afterwards as risk increase additional expected return must be paid to investor to compensate for their risk taking and that that figure briefly describes this risk return trade-off as well fourth principle is that market prices are generally right so we have this theory of efficient market hypothesis and uh, that that theory uh, posits that the market prices of all traded assets fully reflect all available inform information at any instant in time so therefore stock prices are a useful indicator of the value of the firm because all information is reflected in those prices prices fluctuate in a free market they can go up or down depending on the news and information available to investors prices change price changes reflect uh, changes in expected future cash flows good news means the company has good prospects in the future to generate more cash flows and as a result an investor would be compensated more highly it's not surprising to see that good decisions will tend to increase in stock price and vice versa bad decisions on the other hand will decrease the stock price at the same time we need to recognize that markets uh, has inefficiencies so market prices generally reflect the true state of the world however there might be some inefficiencies that can cause the markets to miss some inform important information about asset values for that reason the efficient market hypothesis has has been uh, modified significantly over the years over the last 30 40 years uh, and now we have different semi-efficient strong efficient weak efficient different types of market structures that model true state of stock prices and equity values uh, finally uh, the last principle is to recognize that there will be a conflict of interest between managers and owners of a firm professional management is separated from the ownership of the firm owners of the firm the shareholders basically they are represented to, through a board of directors whereas uh, the management is consists of people uh, professional people managers including the CEO of the firm and those two groups of people they find themselves their interests at least to be misaligned from time to time and that can create agency problems in which uh, the managers of the firm might take decisions that would not be for the best interests of the shareholders and obviously the shareholders have the a goal of maximizing their wealth that has to be recognized and it is possible to create mechanisms and control mechanisms to uh, to enable uh, board members shareholders and therefore owners of the firm to to, to somehow follow up with uh, the management uh, it's impossible to, to 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 check every single step the management takes however we can still put some bonuses and some other incentives into the mechanism so that managers actions will support the shareholders goals and that would be the fifth principle